Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make some gorgeous little scenes using stamps from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. These are peg mounted stamps and they're actually really easy to use. I was wondering, because I'm used to working with regular unmounted stamps a lot, but the nice thing about these little peg stamps is there's registration marks on the side so it makes it really easy to line things up. We're going to make a couple different cards today, but I wanted to show you all the different samples I made using the stamps that I had on hand here from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. Now, I kind of like to break them up into two different types of projects. Um, there's kind of the landscape type projects like these two pieces here and I'll show you how to make that wood grain texture at the end of the video. It's a super super fun technique. Um, so there are stamps where you'd kind of build a scene like this like a landscape and there's also stamps where you'd kind of build like a floral arrangement a little bit more of an overall pattern or abstract design. They're both very easy to do but I think starting off with a floral or an abstract design like this or like a wreath is a lot easier. So that's what we're going to begin with today. I I recommend beginners start off with something easy like a wreath or a swag or spray, something where you can put down a branch and follow it like I did with this cherry blossom stamp set and with a bittersweet stamp set. Both of them are very easy to use for beginners. So I first just sketched on a very light heart with a pencil so I'd have some guidelines to uh, stamp against. Now since this is a rather large stamp for the um, rubber stamp tapestry stamps, it's on a wooden block but it's still pretty easy to figure out where you're going to stamp. I'm just stamping along the heart that I drew. You can always trace a cookie cutter or a stencil if you need to. Whatever makes it easier for you. Remember, this is art. This is fun. There's no right or wrong. Just have fun with it. And remember, we're also going to be filling in with those smaller stamps so it doesn't have to be perfect. So it almost even looks like a uh, like a triangle at this stage. Now the next thing I want to do is use my um, largest of the three peg stamps. I want my largest flower, which is this one right here. Kind of think of it like you're filling a jar with rocks. You got to put your big stones in first, and that's what your bigger flowers would be. And then you would put in your smaller pebbles, and that's what your next size flower would be. And then you would put in your sand, and that would be like the next size down. And then finally, you'd fill in with your water. And I kind of almost think of the leaves as my water because um, I feel like I can always sneak in a few more leaves. <laughs> okay, so then I've got this um, other cute little set of three stamps. Now something to remember and to think about is to turn your stamp as you work and that way you don't have all your little flowers lined up like soldiers. You don't want that. And then I also like to um, use a couple different inks with some of these flowers. It just makes it look like you've got more stamps and makes your design feel much more full. And see how you can really um, get that heart shape just by where you're putting your flowers. And I also grabbed two different shades of ink for my leaves. I grabbed bamboo leaves and pear tart. Use whatever brand of inks you prefer. I like these little memento ones because um, they, oh, the pads always seem nice and juicy and I can get re-inkers for them. So that's my preference. You use whatever you like. So I'm gonna go in with a few dark leaves. And, um, and oh, the nice thing about this is there's a little registration mark here. It kind of shows you where the tip of the leaf would be. So it makes it really easy to line it up so you know exactly where it's going to come from. And then you can kind of also tell where you've stamped before and you can um, twist your stamp around so you make it a little bit more random. Now I didn't wash my stamp before going into that other green because even though it's a lighter ink, it's still a shade of green. So I'm not really worried about contamination there. If you have any pencil lines when you're done, you can always erase them, but you might not even see them enough that you feel you need to. So just keep that in mind. Always room for more leaves. I love the leaves. I like natural elements. Uh, a lot of times people ask me, beginners will ask what they should begin with, what they should get when they're, if they're just starting out. And I think um, natural elements are always good because you can use them for birthdays, anniversaries, Valentine, um, even Christmas sometimes. You have so many more options. Now look how quickly we created that. In less than three minutes, we have a beautiful, beautiful little design. Now something I like to do to kind of make it um, seem a little more finished is I will take a stippling brush 
this is a um, Judy Kins color duster and a little of one of the inks that I've used and I try to use something I've already have out that way it'll match and then I just sweep some ink onto the edge you could of course use your blending sponges if you prefer I just find I get a perfect result every time when I use a little color sweeper or a stippling brush and um, these Judy Kins ones are just the ones that I happen to prefer but you can use whatever you have in fact probably like um, shaving brushes or if you had some big stumpy kids chunky brushes it would work just as well but they there you have it, a very quick and easy little topper for a card. Now another type of floral motif would be more of like a cluster. So this is the one I'm going to show you how to do. And this is my second try on this. I'll show you my first try, which isn't horrible. It's just I didn't really have a good idea on, how, on where to place my flowers to get them to line up properly. So I mean, it's really, um, it's really easy to uh, to do this to make it look nice. And this is these are a couple other examples from the other kits. And I'll link all these below in the video description in case you want to find any of these particular ones. But I thought this would be a really great one to to learn on. I liked the roses. I thought this would have a lot of um, really useful designs in it if you're scrapbooking or making bookmarks or cards or whatnot. And the colors I'm using here is I'm using a couple um, reds and a pink, two greens, and a gray. And let's find this stamp set right here. I got it right over here. And the stamps on this set are a little bit bigger. I'm gonna open it up here and you'll see what I mean. Now these stamps could also be used on ceramics or um, vases or anything because you've got these really easy to use um, like pegs. You can roll them onto ceramics or vases. I like the size of these stamps. I love how closely trimmed those are. These are really, really great to work with. So we're going to start with an artist trading card size card. And those are always fun to do. And if you really love them, you can always put them on a card like I did here. Or you could just leave them as artist trading cards. Totally fine. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually put in my branches. And the branches on this kit are on a peg. And I'm going to use gray. And actually, this gray is pretty much going to fade into the background. But I want kind of like a diagonal um, look here. And I'm not connecting them. I'm just kind of throwing them hither and yon. Okay, it just helps give it, make some guideposts basically to figure out where you're gonna want, want to put your other things. And then I'm gonna go in with my largest flower, which is this rose right here. And I'm gonna do it in this um, kind of medium corally red ink. Okay, you can see it's nice and shiny, nice and inked up there. And turn your stamp as you go and you'll get um, a much more pleasant arrangement because it won't look like everything's all lined up. Now you can see there is a little um, registration mark here. It's not so important on the flowers, but when you're doing something like a um, like leaves, you're going to notice that registration mark's really handy because it tells you where the stem starts. So it'll be easier for you to tuck in little leaves around your flowers. But I want to get all my flowers in first. I think next I'm going to go with the darker red and the smaller flower. You know, something I found really helpful and interesting is that I could go in with a lighter ink. I'm just going to tap off the extra because I am going to go into a much lighter ink pad here. Um, you can go into a lighter ink, and then if you wanted to kind of have one of these nestled behind another one, if you kind of stamp over it, it kind of tucks it in behind if you're going with a lighter ink, which I thought was really helpful to know. See? And it looks like those are a little bit further behind. Now you may want to do some masking, and if you want to mask, this is how you do it. And basically, this is kind of when you want something to appear behind something else. What you do is you take a, a post-it note. You can buy masking paper, but I find post-it notes are so easy for everyone to find. And then what you want to do is stamp your, um, your flower here on the sticky edge, okay? And you may want to make a couple of these if you have a bunch of areas you need to mask out next to each other. And then what you do is you trim it very closely. Okay, now I did find this very useful to, have to make some masks for some of these items um, that I'm working with. We'll, I'll show you that in the, in the next thing that we do. Um, because then you can stamp right up to something and not have to worry if like maybe you wanna go in with a darker ink and you want it to look in behind. Because here, when we went in with a lighter ink, it easily looked like it was behind the darker item. But if we wanted to put like a, something really bright, like maybe a stem, like some leaves, we'd wanna make sure that we could kind of protect that area. So I put that down there. 
And then I go in with my little rose leaves here and I want to go in with this dark cottage ivy ink. Make sure I've got that inked up really good. I could actually stamp right over the flower so that those leaves will appear to be coming right out from behind it. You see that? So that's masking. That's really, really important to know. And that way it kind of makes you look like you have some additional stamps too because you're able to manipulate them a little bit better and, and instead of having every every little sprig of leaves come out right from the tip of the stem, you actually get to have the leaves come out from like like the last three or something like that. Just gives you more variety and that's what's great about stamping is that you can get so many different looks with just a few supplies. So I'm gonna just mask a few things here and then the rest I'll just kind of throw in and stamp. But you don't you don't need to do this. It's fun. It's a great way to get a little bit different of a look. Not, you know, you don't have to do it, but it's totally helpful. Now I'm going to go in and do some of these lighter greens. And this is the bamboo leaves. And so I could see that my stem is going to start right there where that line is. So I can use that to guide where it comes out of. See, so I knew it was going to come right out from behind that flower. So I'm going to go in and throw in some more leaves. I'm going to use both shades of green. So pretty. Let it go right off the edge too. That'll give you a really, really beautiful look. I like to move my uh, piece around as I'm working so that I can, I can uh, really get in there and, and reach it from a comfortable angle. I, it took me a while to realize that there was a, uh, a registration marks on there. <laughs> it's kind of silly when I think about it now. It's like I was like trying to like look under there where I was stamping and figure out where stuff was going. If only I'd read the directions, I'd be <laughs> I would have had a much shorter learning curve. You guys probably would just read the directions. You probably don't even need to see the tutorial. There we go. And you can also stamp off the edge and kind of have it coming in. Like if you want to frame it or you just want to make it feel a little bit more finished. And the thing is, I'll take like inexpensive cardstock, chop it down to ATC size, and then um, it's just so much fun to play with. Now I want to have um, a little bit of blue in the background, and I'm going to do this pretty Bahama blue. It's uh, just almost like a turquoise. And I only have like, you only really need about half a dozen of these little brushes. Just keep one for blues, one for greens, one for yellows. Um, and really that's all you really need to have. I don't wash these in between. I find that they actually work a little bit better if I uh, keep some ink on there. And there you go. It's so simple. You can also give it a little direct to paper edge on there if you want to. And mount that on a Mother's Day card or just leave it as an artist trading card. It's so pretty. Up next we have what I call kind of the landscape style stamps and um, there's some really excellent guides on the packaging to help you build these. Like I pretty much just followed the packaging for this one and I thought it was so adorable. Um, but we're going to do this one today because I did it a little bit differently than how the packaging showed so I thought it might be kind of fun and give you another option if you are going to make these. And again I'm going to start with um, an artist trading card size card. Actually I might go with one that's a little bit taller just so I have a little more room for that fun sky. And cause like this is just a standard artist trading card. This is just going to make it a little bit, a uh, little bit taller, a little more fun. And I will tell you how to do that wood grain in a minute, but I want to do this part first. And I want to show you because I'm going to be using this set right there, but also they have some individual peg stamps that are available. And I thought it'd be nice to kind of put in this larger, um, this larger flower here, just because you get, it just gives you a little bit more to go on. I think that both of those, those uh, small lily pads were in that set. So you can see everything on their website though. I'll put a link in the video description so you can find all of that. So the first thing I want to do is a little bit of masking and I'm going to separate the sky from the water when I do this. So I'm just going to take a post-it note and stick that down on my paper and I'm going to do it on my grid so that I can see a little bit better and make sure I get it nice and straight. Okay, so I've got that nice and straight and now I'm going to choose some colors for my sky and I think I'm going to use Rosebud, Dandelion, and Tangelo. And then for my, my uh, water I'm going to use Bahama Blue. 
and I'm going to use my color dusters because I just, I just can't get such a lovely look any other way. So I'm going to go with my pink one and my orange yellow one. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is go into my yellow because it's my lightest color. I find it's a little easier to, to do that. And I want to protect my work surface. Plop that right under there. I always think my background paper <laughs> looks really cool when I'm done. All right, and then I'm just going to sweep back and forth. Put some color down, and I'm going to bring that about halfway up the sky. But when I start adding more color, I'm going to make sure I do that at the bottom because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to have any um, any weird streaks. I can even pull it right up from that center so I can get that kind of sunrise look. Now I'm going to go in with Tangelo with that same sponge. I'm going to sweep it side to side, kind of in an arc. Sorry if my hand's in the way. And now I'm going to go in with Rosebud, which is a lovely pink, and I'm going to use my pink sweeper. And I'm just going to sweep it across the top in an arc. This will give us our lovely blended sunrise. Maybe just a little bit more. Nice thing about using the small ink pads is that you can have a lot more, you could put a lot more out on your workspace at a time. Okay, so there we have our sky, right? Look at that, isn't that pretty and neat? So now what I'm gonna do is actually mask off that top part and do the same on the bottom except just with the blue. Okay, it might, it might be kind of difficult for that to stick. You might want to even use tape. I'm just going to kind of hold it with my hand to make sure that I don't, um, I don't let it move while I'm working. But I can drag it down so that I don't have to worry about the ink going underneath. You don't need a lot here either because you're going to be stamping on there. So you don't want to cover it with so much blue that you can't see what you got going on. Okay. And so you use less ink if you're using older um, sweepers that have, that have like accumulated some ink. So there we've got our base. Oh, I love it. I love it already. Okay, and now we're going to do our stamping. And um, I like to put my focal point in first. So I am going to do this bird. And I think I'm going to do that in gray. And I can always add colored pencil on top later. If I feel like it's not dark enough or I can't, it's not opaque enough, I can go in later with the colored pencil because the colored pencil is very opaque. I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, black on the edges. It's up to you. You don't have to do that. And I'm going to figure out where I want him to be. I think I want him to be right there. Okay. And now I'm going to start doing, um, I want to do the flowers, I think, because I really want them to stand up. And I'm going to do them in lilac posies, I think. Now these, these, this is um, a larger flower than what comes in the set because this is one of the um, extra ones because you can get some additional ones. And I'm looking at the registration mark. I know that should be at the bottom so that my flower is standing right side up. So I'm going to put a couple of these close to the bottom. And then I think I'm actually, maybe I'll do one that's kind of half off. All right, and then I'm going to go to my smaller one because as you're working and building a scene, you want things further away from you to be higher on the page. And I'm keeping that registration mark facing me. I did get a little sideways, but oh, nobody's perfect. And I think that's good because I got one, two, three, four, five. It's always nice if you put things in a in a uh, odd number. It just looks a little more pleasing. And I already cut out some masks for those flowers, like the last time I did it. So I'm going to make use of those. And what I do, look, I just stick them on the inside of my package here. So I have them with this set the next time I use it. I don't have to cut another mask, which is a time saver. Okay, and now I'm going to stamp some of these bigger lily pads down here near the front. And I'm going to use um, bamboo leaves. I'm going to probably use bamboo leaves and cottage ivy because lily pads can be kind of dark. 
they can be kind of light. They can be either color. And I'm going to overlap my lily pads there. And then maybe I'll do one a little bit darker and put it just down below. I do have a hard time getting keeping my lily pads from being crooked, but that's alright because they can kind of stack on top of each other. So then when I remove this, I have got my flower sitting on top of the lily pads, which is what I want. So I'm going to move that over here and get a little more lily pad action happening. Oh, a completely crooked lily pad, so what I'm going to do here is go in for the tiny which is the dark one, this is the darker, and go to this tiny lily pad and see if I can't uh, kind of disguise the fact that I stamped that completely crooked. Because, you know, that's what art is sometimes, it's the art of disguise. Put that on there, we'll get a couple more big ones. Oh my gosh, I can't type by type. I can't stamp a straight lily pad today. And get our smaller one. I'm just gonna keep on masking and stamping as I go. And now I'm switching over to the smaller lily pad. Because it's getting further away. So I want it to look, I want the lily pads to be smaller. There's also some really cute fish that go along with these. So I'll probably sneak one in there. So, um, because if you put too many in, they look a little funny. It's like, watch out fish, that bird is going to get you. And I want to put a couple lily pads around our guy right here. And a couple little small ones kind of overlapped. Oh, you know what? I'm going to mask that again because I don't want to cover that up by mistake. Alright, so I'm going to remove my masks, and I think I'll add a, oh, I love these, these cute little seed pods. I want to do that in potter's clay, which is kind of like a, like a burnt sienna kind of color. These are really cute. Stick some of these in there. And again, because of the registration mark, it's really easy to see where the little seed pods are going to come out. So I love that. Takes the guesswork out. Okay, and a little fishy fish in Tangelo. We'll sneak him, sneak him right in there. Maybe we'll sneak another one over there. I always say, oh, I'm not going to do a bunch of them, but then I see him and like, oh, they're cute. I got to do some more of those. Okay, and I actually think it's really cute to put some like, uh, <clears throat> maybe even put some like birds in the sky or um or stamp that cute sun that's from the um from the barnyard scene would actually be really cute in there another thing i like to do is to use colored pencils to enhance my stamping and i like it because you can use any brand you have they're quite affordable i mean even like the kids crayolas would work good for this and i could make an area a little bit more opaque or if my masking wasn't quite right i could even make it kind of show up on top because colored pencils tend to be opaque but what i'm doing here mostly is just giving a little bit more punch of color to some of these flowers and uh, to the bird and I'm also going to add a little bit of blue in the water just to kind of give it some like ripples and some shadows because under your lily pads you're going to have a little bit more shadow and it just helps put a little more depth in the scene I think so I've got a little bit of pink there on the flowers and it's not a lot but it, I think it adds quite a bit you don't have to do it if you don't want to and I can go in here with a little bit of this blue pencil and any brand of pencil is going to work. These are color soft. They're kind of what I'm really enjoying lately. But really, we're, anything is going to be fine. And go right over the fish if you do add blue in the water. Because the fish are, are in the water. They're close to the top, but they're in. And then you can put smaller ripples as you get out further. And you could even do some sunset color ripples in your water if you felt like it. 
but there you go there is that scene it's very easy to do and I recommend you you practice because you know what I practiced it took me a few a few uh, times to get these right but even my practice ones don't look too bad but I wanted to talk about the color pencil because um like here, I added some yellow colored pencil inside of the purple stamped flowers to bring it up and make it kind of uh, kind of pop a little bit more. Um, and I did that in the little tiny pink flowers too. I added a little bit of yellow. So, you know, see your different, use different shades of ink, use your colored pencils, um, really have fun with this. It's such a fun technique. So as promised, I'm gonna show you how to do the wood grain because I think the wood grain would go well with pretty much anything here. I mean, just even just look at that. I mean, it looks like planks on a dock. I think it looks really great with that and it's a very easy technique to do. What I have here is a scoring board, and what I'm gonna do is score my paper every uh, half inch. If you don't have a scoring board, you can go ahead and just fold it every half inch just to get some grooves on your paper. Um, or, you know, you could even use an embossing folder if you had like a stripe, or if you had like a wide stripe, or if you had even a wood grain folder, that would just be, that'd make it really easy. But I'm just doing this with a scoring board because most of us have that. So this is what we have right now. Now you're gonna want your scrap paper again to protect your work surface, because we're gonna get inky. And we're gonna take a few different shades of ink, and I like uh, to use shades of brown. Um, just kind of drag it. You see, it already starts to look a little wood grainy when you do that. Um, you could even do shades like colored inks. Um, you could do grays. That looks nice. Just if you're careful if you're using a dewdrop pad that you don't like stop in the middle or you'll get like that the shape of the pad and that's not exactly what you want. One thing that looks kind of cool, but mine were too dry and I pressed too hard and I kind of uh I kind of messed them up a bit. I'm gonna have to use some gorilla glue to uh, stick that back down. But these uh chalk inks will work well. Just uh yeah, make sure they're really juicy, otherwise you're gonna end up messing up like I did, but uh, not a big deal. I know how to fix it. But after you've got all the colors you want in there, just throw some this in there too. Once you have all the colors you want, then you're going to take a little bit of white paint or white gesso and a fan brush. So what you want to do is just get a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush. You don't have to use a fan. You could use just like a, like a house painter, um, natural bristle brush. They're called chip brushes. They're cheap at the hardware store. You, know, you can get one of those if you don't have a fan brush. Um, and just wash it out when you're done. You can use it over and over again. And then what I'm doing is I'm starting on the paper, okay? And I'm dragging it. Okay, you want it to be uneven and you're probably gonna keep needing to reload, but just you're just getting a little bit of paint on the tips. Don't load up your brush too much or you're gonna have blobs and it's not gonna look streaky like peeled paint. And that's kind of what we're going for. This, this is peeled paint look. So we keep it with the wood grain. It's better to do a little and see how you like it than to do a ton and, and not like it. And then something else I like to do is, um, and then you'll want to wash your brush, so don't forget that. Then I like to take a colored pencil, either black or dark brown, and um, like this is already dry. This is crazy. Gesso dries really quick. If it's regular acrylic paint, you might need to give it a, a like a minute to dry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to outline the grooves. Oops, I pressed too hard and I broke my pencil lid. Okay, just kind of go in there and reinforce those lines. You can't beat this for a quick background though. And then some I like to also just kind of mess it up a little bit. Like put you can put nail holes in. You can and put knots in. Make it look old palette wood. It's such a hot trend right now. You could even go over it with a little bit more ink if you have something that's not too... I'm gonna try this again, see if I can get this to release. That's... Not... let's try this one. I'll try one of these here. This one, the sponge came loose, but it's still a great color for it, so I kind of want to use it. Add any of these colors in there you want. You can add other colors of paint too, just inks are easy. Just maybe something a little bit newer and fresher than this. And then if you feel like you want a little bit more light, you can go back over it again with your paint. Just keep layering it until you're happy with the results. And there, look at that faux wood grain. Isn't that awesome? 
Now to do the little frame here, what I did was I took the leftover bits because I cut these to uh, I cut these from an eight and a half by eleven sheet. I cut four, um, and I cut them at four by. Um, five and a quarter so I ended up with some strips and what I did was I did that same technique on the strips and cut them at an angle so it looked like a mitered picture frame and I think that is just such a fun look and so easy to do and wouldn't that look great on pretty much any card using these techniques because it's so natural it just has such a pretty look and um, and you could totally do this. That was my mistake one. That's my mistake one, and I still think it's pretty. That's how awesome these stamps are. So the stamp company, again, is Rubber Stamp Tapestry. There is a coupon code in the video description, so you can save on your order of rubber stamps. You can use whatever inks you have. They do have inks for sale. The coupon does not apply to inks, but, um, but these stamps are just so cute and easy to use. I mean, I sat down and I was making these cards, in minutes. It's so much fun. I want to thank you so much for watching today. If you liked this in-depth scene building tutorial, please leave me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.